In this week's video, we'll cover a NASDAQ signal that's only been flashed four times in the last 22 years. We'll be moving quickly, so feel free to use the pause button on your video player. Right out of the gate, we'll cover nine new market signals, and then we'll review the latest U.S. economic data. And at the end of the video, we'll be talking about new clients and some additional research that we'll be conducting in the coming months. The graph on your screen shows the percentage of NASDAQ 100 stocks that are greater than their 150-day simple moving average. We've got data going back to 2002, and we are reviewing all the data. In 2022, lower right-hand corner of your screen, we hit a very rare oversold level. And since then, we've made it back all the way to the thin top blue line. That doesn't happen very often, in fact. It's only happened four previous times in the last 22 years, 2003, 2009, 2012, and after the COVID low in 2020. So let's take a look at subsequent S&P 500 and NASDAQ 100 performance to see what we can learn. We'll start with the NASDAQ 100 table. One year later, all four cases, higher median gain 24%. Three years later, all four cases higher, median gain 50%. And in the 2003, 2009, and 2012 cases, the average gain looking out five years over 100%. How about the S&P 500? One year later, 100% of the cases higher, median gain roughly 17%. Three years later, median gain approximately 39%. Five years later, median gain just a hair under 74%. And all of that is based on something that just happened again for the fifth time in late 2023, in late December. It's good to keep in mind the concept on your screen helps us understand why these signals are relevant. Technical analysis tracks the past. It does not predict the future. You have to use your own intelligence to draw conclusions about what the past activity of some traders may say about the future activity of other traders. So when we review this A to B move here in 2009, this is the past activity of some traders. From a historical perspective, this is what it said about the future activity of other traders. That was study one of nine. We've got eight more to go. Similar concepts, now we're looking at NYSE stocks greater than their 50-day exponential moving average. Once again, we're looking at all of the data. We have data going back to 2002. It's relatively rare for the market to hit this type of oversold condition as it did in 2022, and then make it all the way back to a point where approximately 85% of NYSE stocks are greater than their 50-day. It's only happened four previous times. And in terms of assessing probabilities, subsequent S&P 500 performance, very encouraging. One year later, 100% of the cases higher, median return 25%. Three years later, all four cases higher, median gain 47.28%. How about subsequent NASDAQ 100 performance, walking forward from the same dates? All four cases higher a year later, median gain just under 32%. Three years later, once again, all four cases substantially higher, average gain almost 66%, median gain over 59%. Doesn't predict anything, it just helps us assess the probability of good things happening relative to the probability of bad things happening. Next data set is tied to the S&P 500. An A to B move from here to here. We've got data going back to 1999. A move like that has only occurred a handful of times. 2003, 2009, 2011, and 2020. If you know your stock market history, these are pretty attractive dates, and thus it's not surprising. Average gain one year later in the S&P 500, 19%. Three years later, almost 41%. Average gain one year later in the NASDAQ 100, walking forward from the same four dates, 25%. Three years later, almost 57%. And look at the consistency of the returns. Now let's look at NASDAQ composite stocks, greater than their 200-day exponential moving average. 
a move from this oversold level here in 2022 back to the top line, it's rare. It's only happened two previous times, after the major low in 2009 and after the major COVID low in 2020. Subsequent S&P 500 and NASDAQ 100 performance, very satisfying. Average 1, 3, and 10-year performance for the S&P 500, 19%, 36%, 190%. 1, 3, and 10-year average performance. The two signals for the NASDAQ 100, higher 26% on average a year later, 57% three years later, 372%. In the one case that we have data for following the 2009 major low that occurred on March 9th. Keep in mind, a similar A to B move was just completed in December of 2023. Let's shift gears to the S&P 500 volume momentum oscillator. Have data going back to 1999. We're looking at all of the data. It's rare to see a move from this oversold condition here in 2002 and then have the data set make it all the way back to the top line as it did here in early 2004. Something similar happened after the major low in 2009, in calendar year 2013, and calendar year 2016. We just tagged the upper line in late December. Returns in the S&P 500 and NASDAQ 100 following the historical signals was impressive. S&P 500, all four cases higher three years later, median gain 32%. NASDAQ 100, all four cases higher three years later, median gain 55.38%. Continuing with our weight of the evidence approach, now let's look at data tied to the S&P 400 mid-cap index. New highs minus new lows percent, a move from the lower blue line to the upper blue line completed in 2012, 2016, 2021, and at the end of 2023. Limited data set here, only have data going back to 2010, but it's good to see something out of the mid-cap sector, and it's also good to see the very encouraging performance in the S&P 500 after similar signals. Three years later, all three cases higher, median return 33%, For the NASDAQ 100, three years later, all three cases higher, substantially higher, 51%, 76%, 29%. The median of those three numbers, just a hair under 51%. Earlier, we looked at data tied to the NASDAQ composite. Now let's look at data tied to the NASDAQ 100, the percentage of stocks greater than their 200-day simple moving average. Have data going back to 2002, extremely rare. This type of move only occurred in 2009 and in 2023. The upper line was hit on July 21st, 2009. S&P 500 was up 107% five years later. The NASDAQ 100 was up 68% three years later. Simply telling us to keep an open mind about better than expected outcomes. All of this speaks to the longer-term outlook. It doesn't tell us much about the next three days, three weeks, or three months. Earlier, we looked at MYSE stocks greater than their 50-day exponential. Now let's look at the same data set tied to the simple 50-day. Rare to get to this oversold level down here in 2022 and then make it back to this region up here. Dating back to 2002, the only other times we've completed that trip, 2003, 2009, after the major low in 2011, after a major low in 2020, and in late 2023. If you know your stock market history, those are very encouraging dates, and thus it's not shocking that the median return three years later in the NASDAQ 100 was a hair over 60%. Median return three years later in the S&P 500, a little bit over 45%. A lot of consistency here, a gain of 40%, 58%, 53%, and almost 41%. We're looking at data tied to the MISE composite, the S&P 500 index, the NASDAQ composite, an S&P 500 data set that's volume-based, data set tied to mid-caps, We've got the narrower NASDAQ 100 in addition to the NASDAQ composite. 
and mid caps were also joined by small caps. The S&P 600 small cap index new highs minus new lows percent. I have data going back to 2010. A similar A to B move was completed in 2012 after the major low in 2011. In 2016, after the major low that occurred in February of 2016, after the COVID low, the round trip was completed in 2021, and we just completed a similar round trip in December of 2023. Since the move is tied to small caps, we'll include the S&P 600 small cap index. In this analysis, small caps did well walking forward, but they lagged the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ 100. But still, a median return one year later of 17%, it's nothing to sneeze at. Three years later, almost 30%. Five years later, a very satisfying median return of almost 86%. S&P 500, one, three, and five-year median returns, 19, 42, 92. One, three, and five-year median returns, walking forward from the data of the historical signals for the NASDAQ 100, almost 25%, 66%, and over 170%. Now, common sense tells us if we were to see anything even remotely similar to what we've just covered, then it's unlikely that we'd be on the cusp of a major recession in early 2024. A lot of talk about a recession, it just hasn't happened yet. Headlines on your screen. April 21st, 2023. December 30th, 2022, over a year ago. March 27th, 2023. December 20th, 2022. And Friday, December 23rd, 2022. Again, over a year ago. Now, if you're a regular viewer of these videos, you know that recessions are called by the National Bureau of Economic Research and straight from the horse's mouth. In recent decades, the two measures that we put the most weight on are real personal income, less transfers, and non-farm payroll employment. And common sense tells us from a recessionary perspective, the first domino to fall is related to employment. People curtail spending if they lose their job or they are seriously concerned about losing their job. And notice the two key data sets are tied to those simple and common sense concepts. There's still a lot of talk about a recession in Q1 of 2024. Real personal income, excluding current transfer receipts. Pretty easy to see the deterioration in the data in the 1973 to 75 window, shaded area is the recession. Weakness in the double dip. Can spot it from across the room weakness in the 1990s, the dot-com recession, and the financial crisis. Data set also took a very noticeable hit in 2020 with COVID. This is what we have in 2024. This really doesn't look like this. In the one year trend, this point not particularly alarming and as we know is it possible that this data set is about to change absolutely positively yes we've been saying that now pushing two years not making any assumptions but this is the data set that we have in front of us and this is the data set that we've had in front of us over the past 12 months real personal income of course tied closely to Employment, once again, easy to spot deterioration in the data in the 1940s near these recessions. In the 1953 to 54 window, here and here, labor market takes a hit, labor market takes a noticeable hit. Very easy to spot the weakness in the labor market in 1980 and in the 81-82 double dip window. It's not difficult to understand why the economy slows down in these windows. People are losing their jobs. Steep slope dot com bust recession. Extremely steep slope during the great financial crisis recession. And this is what the one year trend looks like. This data was pulled on Thursday, January 25th. Headline from that day, January 25th, CNN, U.S. economy grew at a shocking pace in the fourth quarter. We'll continue to keep an open mind, but much like the window in late 2022 and all the way through calendar year 2023, 
The data that we have in front of us today is not screaming imminent recession. And that data in front of us includes the weekly jobless claims that were just released on Thursday of this week. Four-week moving average weekly jobless claims came in at 202,000. According to the Wall Street Journal, that's lower than the weekly average in the two years before the pandemic and less than the 223,000 four-week moving average in 2023. Some other noteworthy developments. Chart dated January 24, 2024. Riskier and higher yielding bonds relative to more conservative three to seven year treasuries trying to break out from a long-term consolidation box. Similar situation for a previous laggard, XLC, the communication services sector for the S&P 500. The chart is XLC relative to SPY. The black moving average is the 250 day moving average. This looks significantly different from what we had in calendar year 2022. Dow Jones Industrial average new highs minus new lows concerning look in the year 2000. Bad things are happening in the stock market. Concerning look after the major peak in the S&P 500 in October of 2007. The Dow peaks in this general vicinity as well. Ugly look in calendar year 2008. An improving look, this chart here is dated December 20th, 2023. It looks even better on January 24th, 2024, exceeding the previous high here. This and this region here really doesn't look anything like this, nor does it look anything like this. A noticeable change in behavior and a noticeable change in risk tolerance. October of 2022, coinciding with the major low in the S&P 500 index. On the contact page on our website, it currently says that we are not accepting new clients. And that policy will formally go into effect on February 1st. In the meantime, if you're interested in becoming a new client, you can email us between January 26th and January 31st. In the coming months, we'll be focusing on our existing and extremely loyal clients, the markets, and some additional research projects that I'm excited about. We're very pleased with the secular volatility model in its current form. There are some things that we would like to confirm. and I believe there are some areas where we can improve what is already a very useful tool. We'll also be working on the integration with the current market model. These projects are going to be incredibly tedious and time consuming, but I believe it will be worth it. Hence, why starting February 1st, we will not be accepting new clients. The secular volatility model was scored during the session on Friday, January 26th. As you might imagine, the results remain very favorable. From a probability perspective, the studies that we just covered speak to an opportunity for investors that can stay focused on the next three to five years rather than the next three to five months. As we've noted in past videos, even if the current secular trend follows a similar path to the trend of the 1950s and there's significant potential upside left in the markets, or if the present day is similar or follows a similar path the 1982 to 2000 bull market, and there's significant additional upside in the years ahead, human beings have a tendency to focus on their fear of potential short-term drawdowns. And we absolutely know that drawdowns and some fairly substantial drawdowns are coming, but we wanna make sure that the fear related to this topic over here doesn't prevent us from capturing a significant and satisfying portion of what could be very appealing returns in the next 10 to 12 years. In addition to the nine signals that we covered in this week's video, we covered numerous signals in the December 22nd video, including this A to B move in the S&P 500 breath momentum oscillator. The subsequent stock market performance aligns with opportunity looking out three to five years. And the nine signals that we covered in this week's video also mesh up nicely with the topic of last week's video, where we demonstrated that the setup in the present day, January 2024, compares 
very favorable with bullish historical setups dating back to 1950. It's also fair to say that the nine signals that we covered in this week's video line up extremely well with the demographic thesis where present day favorable trends and demographics and maybe more importantly how the demographics are going to shift in the next 10 to 12 years could pair up with advances in technology and productivity to create a triple economic boom similar to what we experienced in the 1982 to 2000 window more specifically in the last 10 years between 1990 and 2000. So this week's topics align nicely with all of this and the data can help us keep track of the strength of the secular trend because we all know when the secular trend ends, the results can be extremely painful. And ultimately, all of this and all of this speaks to human behavior and more specifically, human greed and fear that have not changed for thousands of years can't emphasize enough when we present all of these green tables it's very easy to develop very unrealistic expectations about how markets operate in the real world normal volatility double digit pullbacks and corrections they're still going to be part of the equation but the weight of the evidence says if we leverage our tools properly in the coming years and remain disciplined the rewards could be very satisfying and we all know the only way that any of this can work is if we head into next week and every week with that flexible, unbiased, and open mind. The material in this video has no regard to the specific investment objectives, financial situation, or particular needs of any viewer. This video is presented solely for informational purposes and is not to be construed as a solicitation or an offer to buy or sell any securities or any related financial instruments, nor should any of its content be taken as investment advice. Any opinions expressed in this video are subject to change without notice, and Shivako Capital Management, LLC, or CCM, is not under any obligation to update or keep current the information contained herein. CCM and its respective officers and associates, or clients, may have an interest in the securities or derivatives of any entities referred to in this material, CCM accepts no liability whatsoever for any loss or damage of any kind arising out of the use of all or any part of this material. We recommend that you consult with a licensed and qualified professional before making any investment decision.